Hey guys, Pablo with b and and today at top reddit post we're gonna be taking a look on Petty Military Revenge and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so, hit that notifications button and give us a like in the end of this video. Lose my work order and tell me it's not your problem? It will be. This happened about 15 years ago when I was a naval officer. My fellow officer Amy and I were tasked with arranging a change of command ceremony for an 06 with less than two weeks notice. For those who don't know, an 06 is a fairly high ranking officer, colonel in the army, AF, USMC, captain in the navy. And a COC is a fairly large deal that usually takes a couple of months to plan. We had to secure a venue, invite all of the out of town VIPs, arrange lodging for said VIPs, arrange for catering, the works. So, we immediately go to the on-base printing center to get our programs done. They write down the work order, give us a copy, and tell us to call in a few days. Amy and I are busy with the other arrangements, so we task an administrative petty officer to check back with them daily. Every time we get, not done yet. Finally, it's the morning before the ceremony and no programs in sight. Amy and I head down to the printing center, work order in hand, to ask what the hell's going on. The lazy civilian women behind the counter, sorry, but civilians working for the military can be some of the laziest people out there, pulls out a pile of work orders, looks through it and says, uh, it looks like we lost your work order, I ask. So now that you know about it, you can get it done by the end of the day, right? The LCB goes, Sorry, there's a lot of orders before yours. We can't do that. I'm sorry, what? Wrong answer. My order was in two weeks ago. It damn well better jump in front of the line. But like I said, the civilians work for the military. They're both lazy and untouchable, mostly. So what's your name? LCB gives her name and the phone number here. She tells me I write it down. And the manager's name? She gives it to me and then asks why I need it. Well, because tomorrow at the change of command, which will involve several sixes and at least one admiral, I'm going to put something on the seats. It can be your program or a sheet of paper saying, for programs, contact LCB and her manager at the printing office. Your choice. LCB then here has a heart attack and finally calls her manager up. He tries to play it off and make excuses about how long it will take then. And I'm like, dude, it's an eight page bifold set of stitch from the Microsoft Office template that it's already filled in. You have to press one button on your machine and it will dispense them, collated and bound in just 20 minutes. We've wasted more time arguing about it. As it happened, I was journalist major and knew just enough printing lingo to shut him up. At that point, my petty officer shows up and I let her handle the rest. She comes back to the office about 30 minutes later as, what did you do? They were all asked me how I could work with such a heinous woman. Funnily enough, I was known as one of the most laid back officers in the command, so she was totally confused. The next morning, each seat had a shiny new program on it. I still have my copy. Added, to clarify, I didn't go off just because they lost the work order. I went off because they made zero effort to fix it. If she just said, we're really sorry, we'll put that on the top of the list, things would have been fine. To contrast, earlier that day, we dealt with a venue that suddenly the decide to redo the flowers the day before the ceremony. We talked to the workers, they met us halfway by agreeing to do the critical portions that morning so we could rehearse that evening, and we bought them lunch. Hey guys, to whoever's not military hotel, COC is a huge deal. I remember having to go with the troops to just rehearse time and time and time again, and those things take a long time. You see generals walking around, you see a lot of really big wigs in there. And you know what? Civilians, I met a lot of great civilians in the army, but they're right. Most of them, it's not except that they're lazy. They feel they're untouchable, you can't raise their voice to them, you can't talk to them like you talk to soldiers. So for them, it's like, hey, you do what I want, not my actual job. My buddy said he was going to kill the man who was sleeping with his wife. Apologies for the length, I'll try to keep as short as I can, but some context is needed. We're talking about murder here, even if petty. 
back in circa 2000, I was a US Navy corpsman attached to a Marine Corps infantry unit. We docs are the healthcare providers who are embedded with the Marines, acting as paramedics, nurse, moms to the Marines. Every six months, one of the four battalions on our base would deploy routinely to Okinawa, and we would leave behind Okinawa widows. We literally got a speech by our company Gunny when we arrived to Okinawa. What happens on this island stays on this island. I found the speech sickening, but I was 21 and unmarried, so I didn't give it much thought. For those of you who never served the US military, adultery is a pretty serious crime as we have our own criminal justice system, and the punishment is disproportionately inflicted on the most junior of our ranks. Six months after our deployment, we returned to our sandy base in the desert of Southern California, and my buddy discovers that his wife has been cheating on him. Me, my buddy and his wife were all we force, third class petty officers, but buddy's wife was sleeping with a marine gunny, he said. My buddy was obviously furious. He did all the right things, he reported it to the champ command, his wife champ command, the gunny's champ command, but nothing happened. His complaints fell on deaf ears, which is pretty messed up because if he had been sleeping with a gunny's wife, he would have been most deathly punished. Distraught and defeated, a bunch of us were trying to console him one night at the enlisted club on the base over beers. With tears in his eyes, he looks up to the ceiling and declares, I gonna kill this dude. Now, my buddy isn't the most military of the squad. He's a bit overweight and much more into video games than violence. After all, we're all corpsmen, the medical caregivers. Many of us were non-combatants. Chill out, dude. You're not going to kill him or anyone. Yeah, you're probably right. Fast forward about a month later, we're all in the aid station for morning roll call, but Buddy wasn't there. He finally shows up just before lunch and I notice he's been demoted to E3. He looks upset, gather around him. Dude, what the hell? I told you I was going to kill him. You didn't kill anyone. If you did, you wouldn't be sitting in that chair to tell us what happened. I told you, I killed him. Buddy was in charge of our health record computer system, which was connected to the base hospital. The day after we had the beers where he declared he would kill the gunny, he went into the health record system and changed the gunny's status to deceased. Cause of death? Venereal disease. Three weeks after he changed the gunny's record, the gunny went for a check up and the hospital staff was very confused. And when the gunny found out he was dead and how he died, there was an investigation. So my buddy got charged and convicted of conduct on becoming, or whatever. He got demoted the rank, lost half of his pay for six months, and had extra duty assigned for six months. Worth it, he said with a smile. Okay guys, I actually heard and seen things like that happening. Uh, the major issue is usually because the dude is an E7, but it's still the army usually does something about it. It's just E7s and above. It's kind of hard to get them to lose rank. It, it takes a lot. But anyway, still wrong. And I don't know how it is with the Marines. I know that in the army they try to do something. I've seen like first sergeants getting demoted for the same thing. So I'm not saying it's the Marines. I'm just saying that maybe it's the base he was stationed. I'm sick and I can't go home early. You aren't sick and you go home early? Okay. This is a long one, TLDR at bottom. Former military, so no kidding, there I was. Monday through Friday I was coming in prior to 6am for physical training. Work call was 9am. I would shower at the gym and be at work well before 9 o'clock. I had been working late, 8 p.m., and coming in on Saturdays and the occasional Sunday in order to keep up with the workload. I'm not inefficient. After I left, two people did the job I was doing by myself. We were supposed to get flu shots, but there was a shortage or some nonsense, and we didn't get them in a timely fashion. Other units got them before we did because of reason one, reason two, whatever. So my spouse is a nurse. Much like kindergarten teacher, my spouse gets sick frequently from all the sick people she's exposed to. Of course, everything that she gets, I get. Anyway, I was feeling really ill. I was obviously running a fever and doing poorly. I knew I was contagious. I asked my boss if I could go home early and come in late the next day because of how awful I felt. Did I already mention my hours? Yes, I did. Also, he generally skipped physical training, coming late and left early. I was okay with that, but if I asked for a few hours off, it shouldn't be a big deal. 
He said no, an emphatic no, then he went home early. Ok, cool, no worries, I stuck it out, I continue on the same work schedule as always. His supervisor, my senior supervisor, noticed that I was moving slowly, had a winter coat on indoors and was coughing, and asked me why I was at work if I was so sick. He saw us sweating and had chills. He wanted to know why I was risking getting everyone else sick. I told my senior supervisor that I asked to go home early but I was denied. He asked where my immediate supervisor was and I told him that my immediate supervisor had left for the day. My senior supervisor stared at me for a moment and then said, Duly noted, please tell Major ABC to see me tomorrow. And Roger. By the way, my senior supervisor had deployed with me and knew my work ethic. Did I mention that my immediate supervisor had an official photo schedule for early next week as well as an interview for a very prestigious nominative position? Immediately before I went home, as, as gross as it sounds, I went into his office and did the following. 1. I licked his phone. 2. I licked his computer mouse. 3. I jumped up and down until I was able to violently cough on his keyboard, doorknob, pants, desk and armrests on his chair. Then I went home. Fast forward a few days. Guess who got sick with the flu that weekend? Yep. My immediate supervisor. He asked his supervisor, my senior supervisor, for some time off to get ready for his interview, to get ready for his photo and to regain some stamina due to his illness. My senior supervisor talked to him and from what I could gather, he told my immediate supervisor that if his troops were so critical to this mission that they couldn't go home if they were sick, then he was too. My supervisor was absolutely miserable, looked horrible in his photo and bombed his interview. They called my senior supervisor and asked why he was working when he was sick and my senior supervisor told them that my boss insisted that everyone work no matter how sick they were. Fast forward a few weeks or so, I was fully recovered and feeling good. My supervisor was almost recovered. I asked him how the interview went and if he got the position. I got a death stare. I think he knew that I knew and suspected that I got him sick. But screw him for being a jerk when he didn't need to be. TLDR. I had the flu and the immediate supervisor wouldn't cut me any slack and then got sick himself and paid the price. Guys, I've seen that a lot. You know, I was actually for a while a squad leader, I was a team leader and I'll be honest, I actually used fight for my guys for stuff like that and if someone actually came up and was going home but didn't let one of my guys or even his guys go home because they're also sick, I would give them a hard time in front of leadership until leadership actually pulled them up and like, hey, you're gonna go home, but you don't let your guy go home, so you stay until he leaves. That was awesome. Yes, I was a douche, but you know what? that made me keep those guys up to a certain standard. And well guys, that's the end of our video, I hope you guys enjoyed, please leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit that notifications bell. And I'll be seeing you guys tomorrow with more Reddit singles and top Reddit posts. Have a great night.